Executive Vice President, Sales and Marketing for Key Motors America. All right. Thank you. All right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Great to see everybody. Although, I, quite honestly, I can't see you right now because these lights are like right on top of me. Uh, thank you again for, for taking the time to, to travel here to, to Southern California and uh, experience uh, the all-new K900. We, we really appreciate uh, the support. Um, but I'm, before we start talking about the car, I'm going to just give a little retrospect on, on 2013. Uh, from a sales standpoint, down slightly about 4%, but it was really a transformational uh, year for us as we launched seven all-new products or significantly redesigned products, starting with uh, the Sorento about this time last year, followed then by the Forte, the all-new Cadenza, the Soul, the Optima facelift, uh, the Forte Five Door and Forte Coupe. So a very busy year for us, you know, managing inventories as we sold down the old and, and needed to build up uh, stock for the new, uh, managing mix. Um, but we still had uh, some records. We, uh, for the second year in a row, we sold over 500,000 units. Uh, Optima and Soul each had records uh, last year, selling over 100,000 units, as did uh, the Sorrentos. And KMMG, our plant down in West Point, Georgia, built its one millionth vehicle. And that was after we started production in late 2009. So it's still a really good and really big year for us. Um, but now I know a lot of you are, are sitting out there saying, okay, great, you've launched 16 all new or significantly redesigned products over the last five years, but what's really the long-term strategy? And how does the K900 fit into that? We're gonna talk about four pillars that uh, we are focusing on as a business, uh, and I'll go into each one of these in a little more detail, but first, concentrate on quality. Second, strengthen the brand. Third, elevate the ownership experience, and then identify new segments for growth, and that's where K900 is gonna come in. But let's talk about the quality uh, first and foremost. As you can see here, our uh, rate of quality improvement is, is faster than the industry. The Soul uh, is a two-time JD Power IQS winner, and uh, the Sportage last year was also a uh, JD Power IQS winner. Uh, but for the brand, which is really even uh, much more significant, we cracked the top 10 in JD Power in terms of initial quality beating some uh, pretty formidable competitors, particularly on the German side, uh, Audi and uh, BMW. And this is uh, as my job as the, the head marketer, really to get that message out, uh, continue to change the perception of the brand, that we really build great quality vehicles. Uh, another way that um, we're, we're building the, the brand and changing the perception is our second uh, pillar, and that's strengthen the brand. Uh, we continue to do this in a variety of different ways and being recognized by companies like Interbrand that uh, in 2013 put us in the top 100 brands for the second year in a row. We went from 87 in 2012 to 83 in uh, 2013 ahead of brands like Starbucks and Ferrari and Harley Davidson, brands that have been in the marketplace a lot longer than we have been. Uh, we were also named to uh, Interbrand's top 50 global green brands. Uh, we're number 37, and uh, the, that award or recog uh, uh, recognition is uh, for our manufacturing processes around the world and the types of uh, content that we're putting in or the materials that we're using in our vehicles. Uh, next, uh, you may recall in LA, we said uh, that uh, ALG says residual value is a great indicator of brand strength. And uh, we've got some really good news on the K900 that Worth is going to share with you a little bit later. But uh, looking back, we're the seventh highest mainstream brand, uh, or sorry, seventh highest residual value among mainstream brands. Uh, Cadenza has one of the highest residual values in its segment. Uh, the Forte launched with the highest residual in Kia's history, and uh, the Soul, uh, even selling 118,000 vehicles last year, was an uh, ALG Residual Value Award winner. So all of these things are helping us uh, to strengthen the brand. Uh, moving on, uh, people say it's, uh, you know, you're a reflection of the, the company that you keep. And uh, uh, we're keeping very good company. We've established some really high profile partnerships over the last uh, five or six years, including our MBA partnership, uh, not only at the league level, but also with our 14 individual team partnerships. 
Uh, but it's also in things like entertainment with The Voice or uh, with YouTube and the Music Awards. Uh, it's also in the philanthropy space. We're doing much more in that area with donor chews and breaks. Uh, so again, it's about the company you keep. People look at our partners and say, wow, if those partners are uh, you know, uh, co-branding or cooperating with Kia, then Kia must be a pretty good brand because these strong brands wouldn't necessarily associate themselves with uh, uh, not a strong performer. So we're very proud of, uh, of these. Um, looking at the awards and accolades, again, these things help us as a brand communicate that uh, we've got great products, we've got great services. Um, in the past, you know, as in you know, the early 2000s, mid 2000s, we'd get excited when uh, media outlets would uh, give, us a, give us an award for having the cheapest car under $15,000 or something like that. And you know, at the time it was great, it was like, hey, we're getting awards and accolades. But now with all of these great products that we've introduced over the last couple of years, we're being recognized for truly what we have to offer. We're winning competitive comparisons amongst many of your, your outlets. Uh, Consumer <laughs> Reports, NHTSA, IHS, uh, you know, all of these things are helping to elevate our brand in the consumer's mindset. And with three more launches this year, the K900, the sole electric vehicle, and the all new Sedona coming, we expect that uh, hopefully we'll achieve even more than 87, which is our all time record uh, for our internal purposes. The fourth or the third pillar that uh, we continue to focus on to help strengthen the brand is elevate the ownership experience. And we've been working with our dealers over the last couple of years as we've transformed the product to really transform the way that they do business. They're spending a lot of time and money in building new image facilities uh, like you see here. They're spending a lot of time and money in terms of training their, their sales consultants and their service technicians to fix it right the first time and create a true uh, ownership experience. And, uh, J.D. Power uh, told us we had the largest improvement of any mass market brand in sales satisfaction in 2013. So the investment is paying off. Uh, and as we see more consumers come in for our Optimas and Sorrentos and Cadenzas, our dealers are recognizing the opportunity and elevating those experiences. All right, and the fourth pillar was uh, uh, move into to new segments, look for new opportunities. And that's what the K900 is going to do for us as a brand. You know, we've been in the United States for 20 years now. It's hard to believe, and if some of you were with us uh, on that uh, first, uh, uh, first auto show where we introduced uh, the brand, and then on uh, one of the, the first couple of uh, uh, press, uh, press trips, and the, the stories are, uh, are, are, are great and, and always fun to hear. Um, obviously, things have changed a little bit uh, being here at uh, Pelican Hill. Um, but really, again, we've been a challenger brand for 20 years. We defy convention. We challenge traditional automotive convention in terms of the products that we introduce and the marketing and services that we offer. And we're going to continue to do that. And the K900 is going to help us uh, to do that. And uh, for the K900, we really see no better time than to introduce it now, as we've, we've introduced, as I said, 16 all new cars over the last couple of years. We see an opportunity. We see the time is right. We see luxury brands moving down into the mass market space, the under $30,000 price points. And so we ask ourselves, well, if they can come down into our space, why can't we move up into their space? Who says we can't? A lot of people have been saying, oh, you can't do that. And we ask ourselves, well, why not? We're going to challenge a traditional automotive convention. Uh, we also see, in terms of the luxury space, it continues to grow. The, the mid-luxury and the premium luxury segments were both up in 2013. So still a lot of opportunity there for a brand like us. We see tech-obsessed consumers demanding more and more in terms of the technologies that's available in cars. And through that, we see a new definition of luxury. As Scott mentioned, it's not necessarily about tradition and heritage anymore. It's about design. It's about the technology that you put into the vehicles. And it's about the quality. And we think we can tick all of those boxes uh, with the new K900 and, and help show people that this is the new definition of luxury. We also see shoppers looking for new and up-and-coming brands. Uh, they're, again, they're not 
uh, focused on the tradition and heritage, and we see it in a lot of different spaces. We see it in the internet with uh, websites like guilt.com, people looking for uh, luxury, luxury experiences, luxury products, uh, but still at a great value. We see it in, uh, in, in a lot of different other spaces, Kate Spade, Montage Resorts, things along those lines. Uh, TripAdvisor, where people are going online and, and staying, uh, getting great deals at uh, five-star resorts. They're looking for great experiences, but they're also looking for uh, great value. And we're also seeing in post-recession America, people still looking for value. And we believe with the K900, people will feel good about buying a true luxury vehicle, uh, but at a great value. But how are we going to, uh, uh, who are we going to go after? We're going after what we define as the confident individualists. Um, they are uh, people from a demographic standpoint straddling between Gen X and, and baby boomers. 45 to 54 years old. Uh, we see them as being uh, say partners in law firms or accounting firms, small business owners, people who recognize the value of, of their hard earned uh, uh, money and um, wanna make sure that they're getting, uh, again, great value for what uh, they're spending. Uh, they're confident, they're successful, they've had uh, varied careers, their careers have been their own. They've taken different paths to get to the top of their careers. From a mindset standpoint, uh, they're really in th they're worldly. They're into cultural exploration, and to Scott's point, that's why we we shared with you the experience uh, that we did last night. We we found in talking to people, those are the types of experiences they're looking for. They're looking for. Uh, experiencing new cultures, new foods, new drinks, but they're also looking at doing it with their friends and their family, and that's why we tried to create that, uh, that social experience for you uh, last night, because we're trying to help you understand the mindset of the people that we're going after with the K900. Now, in terms of how we're going to communicate with them, we started to launch the uh, K900 immediately after the LA Auto Show uh, in newspaper, magazine, and digital. Uh, really just to start to seed it, let people know that it's out there. On uh, Christmas Day, if any of you were watching many of the, uh, the five NBA games that day, uh, we had our first what we call pre-launch spot on Christmas Day. Uh, because our target customer is big into sports and we knew we could capture them uh, there. Uh, continued some broadcast digital print through about the, uh, just before the Super Bowl, and then we started to tease uh, the, our Super Bowl spot with the, uh, the, uh, the white psych environment here with Lawrence Fishburne trying to figure out how to get his uh, TV uh, ready for the big game. And then on uh, Super Bowl Sunday, February 2nd, we introduced uh, to 111 million people the all new K900. We were in the third quarter, which uh, thankfully was the most watched quarter of the entire game. I think after uh, after our spot ran, people started to just turn off the, the TV. That's what they were waiting for. Uh, but uh, at least that's what I hope they were waiting for. Uh, but anyway, it was a great opportunity to, again, to showcase to America Kia and the K900. And we've used this platform in the past. It was the fifth time that we were in the Super Bowl. We've launched Optima and Sorrento and Forte. Uh, there in the past, and it really, again, helps to elevate the brand. It puts us on a showcase that many people wouldn't expect to find from us. And uh, if you haven't seen the spot, again, what we're trying to do is convey this idea that there is a new reality in the luxury space. And we took a, a, uh, uh, a little spoof off of the movie The Matrix, which uh, came out in 19, 1999 uh, with Lawrence Fishburne and Keanu Reeves. And uh, there was a trilogy. It's a, a very popular film, particularly amongst the target customer that we're going after. Uh, in it, Lawrence Fishburne challenges Keanu Reeves. You take the blue pill and you go back to the reality you know. You take the red pill and you go into the new reality. And that's what we're going to showcase with our Super Bowl spot. Let me <laughs>